Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and this evening I'm gonna play RAF Battle of Britain 1940 It's uh, by Decision Games and well I think you could call this a classic of solitaire wargaming I think um, although it actually says here solitaire and two-player and this is one of the of the great aspects of this game basically you get three games in one box and they all play really different I mean you got um, two solitaire options one is lion this is what we're gonna do um, what we're gonna do in this playthrough and this is where the um, where you play the Royal Air Force trying to defend the uh, British Islands against um, the German bombers and then you can play this also on the other side as a German trying to blow to bomb the British into the Stone Age and uh, to make the invasion of the British Islands possible and finally there is also a two-player option where one person is playing the Germans uh, and the other one is playing the um, the English yeah okay um, so yeah I suggest we simply set up the game okay and just to show you that you um, really get three really different games you got this here this is the rule book for the lion and uh, you can see and then here it's the eagle and this is not just um, two or three different um, paragraphs or so but you get another complete rule book here and there are really a lot of changes uh, and special rules if you play the eagle variant and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to show you that one day too but uh, not now and then as a third rule book we got lion versus eagle and also a complete rule book for that and in addition you also have two maps um, this one here is the map that you use for the eagle and the other one here is the map for the two-player game and for the lion variant so it's not just a one game with a few tweaks and then they sell it as three games but they really give you uh, well kind of three different games here which is definitely cool okay so the game is set I hope uh, this reflection over there is not too distracting I can't find another way to to handle the lighting here um, because I use these um, these acryl here um, yeah you see these uh, reflections here but sorry for that okay so well what do we have here well as you can see it's a pretty big map and you got tons of tables here and uh, sequence of play different boxes lots of stuff here and actually this is something I really like I love games where you have all these tables on the board and in this game there is a lot of stuff on the board I think I don't have any other game with that much tables on the board so that's something I like about that and um, now this here is 
a map of the south of Great Britain and it looks actually uh, completely wrong but if you turn it around just like this uh, oh gosh I don't know if you can see that now maybe like this it might actually make a little more sense we got here London this is the channel here so so you, you see it not the usual way from the south but you see that from the north and the reason for that is um, that in the headquarters and the fighter command where the um, the defense in the Battle of Britain was organized uh, they had a table and on that table the map was placed uh, that way okay and uh, well you can see them the map is divided into different zones and these um, these yellow chits represent our squadrons of fighters and then we got here all this is the German Luftwaffe and the blue ones these are bombers and the gray ones are also fighters and there are two fleets this is Luftflotte 2 and that is Luftflotte 3 so the attacks from that side they usually come from Luftflotte 3 while the others come from Luftflotte, Luftflotte 2 okay so and uh, Well, maybe a few words about the Battle of Britain. It started here on August 11th of the year 1940 and went on, I'm not sure, until Sunday of September of the same year. And it was actually the first campaign that was fought entirely in the air. And the goal of the Nazis was to gain air superiority to prepare for their um, invasion plans of the British Isle. Um, it was called Operation Sea Lion and the goal of the um, of the British was to well simply to defend themselves and uh, yeah to to try to keep the Germans invading the island so and that's uh, that's also the way where how you basically win or lose that campaign. I'm doing the I'm doing the big campaign. I'm at least I'm trying to do. If it takes too long, if I'm going completely mad uh, during this campaign, I will interrupt. But I'm trying to do it. It's the first time I do that, and I think it could be interesting um, because I I think some aspects of the game like replacement and. Uh, Um, yeah, some some special cards that come into into the game later on. All these things they happen not in the smaller scenarios, but only in this big campaign. So I'm going to try to do that. But um, different to my other videos, I'm not going to do everything on camera because that simply will take far too long. It is said that this uh, will take about 12 hours in the rulebook. This is the duration of that game, the playtime. 
So I'm not going to do the whole campaign on camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first day of the campaign on camera just to show you how everything works. And then my idea was that I'm going to do some, some key moments, the really interesting moments, and um, uh, maybe I thought about doing every day from 2 o'clock till the end of day on camera. So this is where it's more interesting because uh, some of my planes um, might not be allowed to fly anymore because they have to be rearmed or they had to land for any reasons or there were losses or something. So there is only a part of my um, um, yeah, only a part of my whole um, planes can be used. So at the end of the day, usually the attacks are more dangerous. So it might be a little more interesting. And in addition, if it's really getting uh, close and this sea lion preparations begin and so on, maybe I go, I go into more detail also at the end of the campaign then. But we'll see about that. So basically the way how you win this game is um, if I'm not wrong about that then if you make it to September 11 there is this the sea lion preparation start and we have here some victory points and um, Okay, so I think I get that now. Um, you have here a um, for example between if you got 25 victory points or if the Germans have 25 victory points um, as long as it's between these two values uh, the Operation Sea Lion is delayed and you're gonna play that day and then it goes to the next day and then it's here as you can see 23 and 24 points and so on. So it's getting closer and closer uh, toward uh, the end of the game and whenever the Germans are above that value so for example on September 13 if they had 23 victory points then um, the I think then actually the island is invaded. Operation Sea Lion starts, and uh, yeah, and you lose the game, of course. And if you manage to to be above this value here, so if you have positive victory points then uh, Operation Sea Lion is cancelled for good. That's the way it happened. And you win the game. So this is basically um, this is basically how it is supposed to end. There is a special way actually I think uh, there can things happening when it's getting even closer and then there are these provisional days that might be used in the end but I, I'm not sure about that actually we'll see then another way to win is or to lose if we come to this 35 space here then it's possible if, if we have a negative 35 victory points then the Air Force is eliminated and uh, there is no way to stop Operation Sea Lion anymore. If we um, if we gain 35 victory points, then the Luftwaffe is that badly um, hit that they will cancel Operation Sea Lion. So this is basically these are the two ways to win. 
One is here, up there, on the calendar track, and the other one is here on the victory track. This is the goal of the game. Okay, so I say we start the game now. Oh, and actually, before we do that, um, I'm going to try to play with the optional night raids here. And in addition, I'm also going to play with the advanced rules. Not the basic rules, but all the rules. Okay, so basically, the game is not that complicated. What you basically do is you simply go through this sequence of play. It, it seems very complicated because there's a lot to do, but uh, basically the steps are pretty clear and you simply go from one step to another and that's it then. So we start with the daily preparation phase. First thing, we got to skip on the first day. And then it's a time of day. So we now check at which time the first raid will actually happen. And to do this, we will draw a raid event card. Here we go. And it says time advance 1. Okay, down here. So usually you start at 6 o'clock and now we place it here at 8 o'clock. You can see here, this is our clock, and there is the time marker, which moves like this, and, yeah. So, and then we got the weather forecast. And we got a weather table here. So now we simply roll a die, and then we check for the weather. Let's see. Okay, that's a two. And uh, it says now here, in the Luftflotte 2 area, the weather is clear. So that is now here on that side, on the left side of the board. You can see here, there is this line, Luftflotte, Luftflotte 3 and Luftflotte 2. So on the left of the line, this is the area basically where Luftflotte 2 would attack. You can see it, it's like that. And on the right, we got Luftflotte 3. And usually you have more attacks from Luftflotte 2. And the weather here is clear, so we don't put a marker in this box. And it was a 2 that we rolled, so that means that in Luftflotte 3, we have patchy cloud. So we take now a weather marker here and we place that here in the weather box of Luftflotte 3. Fine, and then it says night patrol assignment. So what we can do now, we can decide if we want to send um, planes on patrol during the night of this day. And I'm going to do that. The only planes you can use here are these Blenheims. They have this blue... Uh, the blue writing here on the chits. And you can simply take all the Blenheims or as many as you want and then place them here on this moon. And you can see the moon is divided in two areas. One is for Luftflotte 2, one is for Luftflotte 3. So that means that while well, the ones that are in here, they patrol basically this area and the other ones patrol the other area. And that's what we basically do. So we simply, um, yeah, I mean, we simply place here, take simply the Blenheims and then place them somewhere here. Actually, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Might be a good idea not to place them all in the same area. So I'm going to place two here, Luftflotte 3, and the other ones go to Luftflotte 2. And the Blenheims are not very strong uh, during the normal day combat. So, um, yeah, uh, and you can only use the Blenheims if you play with the night raid optional rules. Otherwise, they're not even in, in, in the game. So, 
yeah, we simply place them here. Fine. And then we got our advanced warning. So that will show us now uh, some vague idea from where the next uh, rate of bombers, of the bombers, of the German bombers, might come. So what we do is now, we take a card and place it here next to the deck. And this is our next target card. So that says the next attack will probably occur here, Luftflotte 2 South. So this is this area here. And you got here South East and here Luftflotte 2. So it's basically in this area here where probably the next ride will happen. And then we can take a further look in the future and that also says the right after the night yeah the raid afterward will probably also happen in the same area Luftflotte 2 south. Okay. And then it says squadron patrol assignment. So what we can do now is we can now order our squadrons to go on patrol. So the decision we have to make now is um, where and how many squadrons we want to send on a patrol. Because, well first, if you are on a patrol, it's the, the squadrons can be faster uh, intercept uh, the bombers. The chances are higher that they can intercept the bombers. And uh, that's obviously an advantage. Problem is, that after the first raid the squadrons that were on patrol they have to land so they might be not available if the second raid or the next raid comes shortly after another so that's a problem here uh, because we know that probably the second raid will be also here in Luftflotte 2 South. So in this case, it's not such an easy decision. And, uh, okay, so I think what I'm going to do now is, um, I'm going to take, for example, one here, C, and I'm going to place that here in this patrol circle. And, uh, yeah, and what you can do is, you can also take um, squadrons from adjacent spaces and place them also in the patrol circle. So in this case, I'm going to take a squadron here from, uh, from Luftflotte to East, from this area here. Of course, it's not a squadron from Luftflotte to East, uh, but it's a squadron which usually would fight against Luftflotte to East, but we can uh, transfer them kind of to the south. So, uh, well, I suggest we take these guys. Usually it's a good idea to, to try to avoid that these um, letters here, see here an A or here the C, you, you should try to avoid that you have um, that you have the same letters uh, in a fight with the Germans simply because um, the way the fighting works later on is that you will um, you get a result and it says um, result uh, whatever uh, that your damage for example applies to letter A 
to all planes letter A. Uh, heavy damage to, uh, applies to planes with uh, letter B and uh, everything's fine applies to game uh, to planes with letter C. So you could gamble of course and say okay I'm, I'm just hoping that it's uh, letter C is doing fine and I'm taking only letter C planes but that's a pretty big risk. So I think it's a better idea to try to balance between these um, these letters so you have a better chance uh, that you can at least intercept some bombers if not all of them. Okay, so let's see. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is um, ah, it's a difficult decision. Okay, I'm gonna take some, I'm gonna place these guys here on patrol and I'm gonna take two here these two and well in addition I'm gonna take one of these Spitfires here from the from the part that you should usually fight Luftflotte 3 I'm gonna place them also here and because it's an adjacent space you can see here there's the region there's the the line that separates the two spaces so we can place that here and then we're gonna take one of these here place it here in the patrol area and yeah and maybe yeah I think I'm gonna place one in London so that might allow me if I if I see the the others um, early enough, I might have a chance to have enough time to take these uh, these pilots that are now over London and then to help here in one of the other areas. Okay, so. Let's hope we're lucky here and uh, well, let's try it. <clears throat> so that was my squadron patrol assignment and then we come to the raid phase. First thing is the raid target determination. And now what we do is we flip this card and we'll see what target we have. Okay, so this is Farnborough and that's a city. And now we're gonna check if there will be a rate at all and if it's gonna be a minor rate or a major rate. And to do this, we have here the German rate priority tables. And uh, we have here the target priority tr uh, track. And as we can see here, the cities have only a low priority. And then we we'll check here strategic value 1. So as you can see here, that is the strategic value. The priority is low, so that means usually we had to roll a die now to determine if it's going to be a minor or a major rate. But this is not the case here because this is, there is no rate on that city at all. Okay, but this is not exactly an advantage because now I kind of well I kind of thought that there will be two raids against this area Luftflotte 2 South but now it's possibly only one. Okay, so now we simply draw the next card and as you can see, the next rate will be probably here, Luftflotte 3. Now our problem is there is nobody patrolling there. But maybe we find the time to do this later. Um, <clears throat> so, let's see what this is. Same problem here. This is Rochester, industry. It's, it's exactly the same problem now. The priorities are low here. Strategic value is only one. 
So again, no raid against this target. So now it's pretty bad. Now we're really in, a, in some trouble because now it's this one here, Luftflotte 3. This is the next target. So our advanced warning was, yeah, was worth nothing. Let's see what we draw now. And if we're a little lucky now and we draw again a low priority target, then the next one would be again Luftflotte 2 South. So maybe we're lucky here. Let's see. Well, this doesn't look good. Okay, so that is Pauling. This is here. Well, at least that's not so much here in this area. It's, it's more here, so it's kind of covered by these guys. So this is Pauling, and this is a radar net. And as we can see now, radar nets are high priority for German attacks. And this thing has a strategic value of 2. So now we're going to check on this table, on this row here. So that means if we roll a 1, it's going to be a minor rate. But we got this asterisk here, so... Okay, it says if Luftwaffe depleted, major rate. But basically it's going to be a minor rate on a 1. Otherwise, we'll have a major rate. So let's see what we get now. Okay, that's a 5. So this is obviously now a major rate. Okay, and now it's the British detection. So now we're going to see how early we can detect the bombers and if we have the time to react early enough. So this is now going to be pretty interesting. Uh, well, basically we got here the raid detection track over, over there. So first we got a roll and uh, we better roll high. That's definitely an advantage. Well, that was pretty cool. That's a five. This is really cool. That's great. Okay. So now we got to modify all that stuff. So we got a five and we got a major rate. So this gives us a modifier of plus three. So it's an eight. Okay. And then we can add the target card's observer course value for the current weather. And this is Luftflotte 3, so that means they come from this area here, and that means the weather is patchy clouds. So now we can see that here, this is the um, observer core value. And the first one is for clear weather, the second one is for patchy clouds, and the third one is for broken clouds. So in this case it's still okay. Um, we can add one. So we had a five, then uh, we have an eight, and then we have a nine. And then it says here each undamaged radar net listed on the target card plus two. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We got three radar nets here, two, three, and four. And as we can see here, this is two, this is three, and that is four. There is no damage marker anywhere, so we can add all together six. So let me see, this is nine plus six, so that's fifteen. That's pretty cool. So this is here, so that means warning time is early, that's good. The intelligence is limited. That's okay. So I think overall we were lucky here. Okay, so if we had a limited, uh, if we had a poor intelligence, then we would know nothing about the size of the rate or about the, the types of the planes that are coming. So we would now have to. Um, to do our squadron commitment without knowing, without any further information. But because we have at least a limited intelligence here, 
um, we can now first um, determine the rate size. So what we do now is we draw one of these four force cards and that says here rate size major rate 9. Okay. And then it says limited intelligence squadron commitment. So we don't exactly know now how many bombers there are, how many fighters there are. Uh, we don't know what types of bombers or what types of fighters. We just know the, the basic size of the raid. But that's okay. And uh, now we can see which squadrons we can send to intercept. And because we had a early warning time, or early warning, um, it says now here, early, we can send squadrons patrolling and in sections en route and patrolling in range. Okay, so now we got to check here the yellow um, area here that shows us which sector is en route? En route is sector 111. So this is the only sector that is en route. So that means we can now um, we can now send the squadrons that are patrolling or that are simply in the sector. So they have enough time to start, that's fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these two and we're going to place these guys here in the hunt box. And now mm, I think I'm going to take Yeah, I think I'm going to take one more of them. Uh, I'm going to take that C, I guess. Yeah, simply because we already have A and B here. So I'm going to take that C guy. And uh, I want to leave one here, simply because the next attack might be also here at Luftflotte 2 South. There is at least a good chance that it is. So, if we send now all our planes, there might be no planes left for the next um, raid to intercept. Okay, so these were now the squadrons patrolling and in sectors en route. These are these squadrons. That one is in the sector, but I don't take it. And then, in addition, we can uh, take the patrolling squadrons in range. Now we see here we got two sectors here that are in range 410 and 211. Okay, here we got 410, and here there is no squadron patrolling because I thought Luftflotte 3, there will be no attack from Luftflotte 3. So these squadrons here are in the sector, but they're not allowed. We can't take them because it, it simply takes too long, even if we had even though we had an early warning, they can't make it, they cannot start and then intercept the fighters. It's not possible anymore. But in addition, we got here 211. This is the other sector in range. So what we can do is we can take now these two squadrons here because these are patrolling squadrons in sector 211 and we can also place them here in the hunt box. We could not take the Spitfire Squadron here because this is not patrolling, it's just in sector. So we can only take this one here. Yeah, okay. So that was now the limited inter squadron commitment. And now we got the rate deployment. So now we draw for the types of the German Gruppen. Okay. 
So the way we do this now is we said here we have a major rate um, that contains nine Gruppen. So what we do is we take now here the first nine Gruppen and then place them here on the rate display in the appropriate box. So we start with that um, Henkel 111 and we got to take it from this side because this is Luftflotte 3. So uh, let's see what exactly, yeah, it's one of these here. And, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. And then we simply place that guy here in the bomber box because it's obviously a bomber. Next one is a Messerschmitt 109. So this is one of these guys. And, yeah, let's simply take one. And the Messerschmitt's 109, they are placed in the hunter box. So, comes here with the others. Next one is a Messerschmitt 110. So, this is one of these, there are only three. And they are placed in the close escort box. So they are directly with the bombers. The fourth uh, Gruppe is a, another Messerschmitt 109. And now we got a C. We got here, uh, this is a C. So uh, we got to try also to um, Well, to to you can say diversify or something. So we got to we got to try not to take from the same uh, letter. We got to try to mix that. That's part of the rules. So this time we're going to take this this group here. So you A, and we're going to place that here. So that was our uh, fourth group, and then we got another Henkel 111, and we already have here a B. So this time we're going to take a C, for example. I think that is fine. We're going to place that here. Then we got a Messerschmitt 109, and that CP, that says Channel Patrol. So um, this is a group that uh, patrols the channel and waits for the, uh, for the raid to come back. So, um, let's see, this is another 109, and this time we might take a B1, although it doesn't really matter, because usually these channel patrols are not part of the fighting. Sometimes they can be, though. Okay, and we place them here in this channel patrol box. And then we got another Messerschmitt 109, and let's take another B because we're going to place that here down in the hunt box and now we got A, B and C. And then we got another Henkel 11 and because we already have B and C we're going to take now an A one. So this is now this one here and place that here. And the last one is another Mi 109 and in this case, I don't know, we got a B here, we got a C here. So I suggest we take an A maybe. Okay. And we're going to place that here. Okay, fine. So, um, yeah. This is now our rate. Okay, if we had an accurate intelligence, then we could now um, place our squadrons in the hunt box and decide how many we want and so on. So uh, we could react um, on this information that we have now, but still it's, it's fine, I think. Now what happens is, 
uh, we got the hunter interception. So that means now we have to make a decision now. As you can see, there are four squadrons, and there are five. Uh, other way around. There are five squadrons and four groupen. So it would be possible now for us to place one of these groupen here in the bomber box because the, the four squadrons they cannot intercept all damn it it's the other way around the, the four groupen they cannot intercept all squadrons because each group can only intercept one squadron. So now I could think about that actually and uh, of course the problem is that um, if I decide to, to take one squadron and place it here I know that I have a better chance to or that I have that I definitely will at least intercept one of these fighter groups of these bomber groups but my problem is um, If I remove one from here, I'm also weaker. So that's not such an easy decision and I have to think that through. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I will actually remove one of these guys and uh, well let me see, I mean uh, we have here a combat result table. So basically we can we can check that out which is the best or, or if there is a best solution here which uh, which gives us the best odds let's see okay I think there is no difference actually so um, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm not going to take this one, the Hurricane, because it's my only seaplane. So if I, if I roll a die and that says that only the seaplanes are allowed to move into the bomber box later on, then it's, it's bad luck if I take that away. But what I can do is actually, I can, I can remove this one, because it's a little stronger than the others. This has a bombing value of 4 or a fighting value of 4. This is the second, the, the, the big number here. That's the fighting value. While the Hurricanes only have a fighting value of 3. So, um, in this case, it doesn't make a difference here. There is no difference on the combat table if I have a... Uh, if I have a 12 or 13 uh, fighting value altogether, it doesn't matter. But it might make a difference, I'm not sure about that, um, later on if we intercept the bombers. So, let's, let's see. And... So that was the hunter interception uh, step. And then we have the raid approach event. So what we do now is we draw one of these event cards and see what happens. And here we have an approach event. And the L is for Lion, the E is for Eagle or Two Player. And we play Lion, so we only have to take care about this L. So that means Channel Patrollers hunt if raid target is coastal or inland. Well, that's a coast. It says coast, so I assume uh, they hunt. Yeah, which is not that great because that means that there are now more of these guys here in this box than squadrons. And that makes it a little bit more dangerous, I think. So that was the raid approach event and now we have the hunter attack. What happens now is we have to check now this combat results table. And this is actually pretty simple. What we do is we add up all the combat values of all planes, British and German. So the interesting point is actually that the uh, that the German planes 
they all have a combat value of zero. So, the more British planes there are, the better. That's obvious. We got a three. We got four times a three, so that means we have a combat value of 12 altogether. And then we have to count the German Gruppen, and there are five here. So it says here, if Luftwaffe is at no depletion, and we have five Gruppen, number of Gruppen in combat, five, then we have to take this column here, and now we got to go to number 12 and this is this one and uh, now actually it would have made a difference if the Spitfire would still be with us because then we had a 13 but I couldn't know that the uh, that the uh, channel patrol comes with us so that was a little bit of bad luck here so this is not going to be easy now um, we got a roll now and I'm pretty sure we might have a problem here. So let's see. Ah, uh, yeah. So this actually, this uh, 5 and a 12, this determined now that we have uh, row number C. So we have to row now. And that's a 6. And that might be actually good. I think this is. That was pretty good. Uh, so. Let's see what happens. We have here the combat result table and you can see here now that's row number C and you see here the results of the die row and we have here an L. This is the side of the Germans and you can see also A, B and C and that applies to the different um, letters here on the plane chits. So all letters A now will um, have the result L, L because we rolled a 6. So now we simply see what that means. We have here the combat damage chart. So the units in the hunt box. We have that here and we have here full Gruppe and uh, an L is a light loss, so that means we can place one of these guys to light loss and we gain a victory point. Well, basically for every A, here down here you see the abbreviations L is light loss, for every A plane we gain a victory point. So this is this one here place that here in German light loss and we have another one here that goes also here to the light loss box and now this gives us two victory points here we go oh we're nearly there and let's see then we have here the German B fighters there is no result here. It's a no effect, as you can see down here. And for the C ones, applies a D, and that means disrupted. So let's see what that means. These are full Gruppen, and disrupted means simply they go to in flight. So we got this in flight box here, the in flight box. So we're going to take the C. Gruppe and place it here to in flight. And that's it then. So now let's see about the German, uh, about the British. So, same thing here British A, light loss. Not that great. And we have 2A, so that was a little unlucky here. And they go now here into this area here, light loss. So we got a 111, and we place that here, and that means we have to give back the victory point. 
And the second one is 211. You place that here. And we lose another victory point. So again, only losers in war. And then we got for the for the B and the C. Let's see that here, B and C. We got a D, so that means also disrupt. And now we got to check again here, full squadron, disrupt, to bomb, box reduced, or in flight full. So this is now the decision we have to make. And uh, it's not an easy one, I guess. I, well, I think actually I want to place them in the bomb box reduced. So I'm going to flip them, they have now this green marker here, and now they are in the bomb box. And uh, let's see what happens to, to these fighters where there is no effect. Uh, yeah, here these are full Gruppen and they go to close escort. But there are two asterisks, yeah, okay, so they go to close escort. Okay, so we place all of them here. And that's it. Okay, so that was the hunter attack. And basically, this goes a little faster. I mean, I explain now a lot, so basically this is not so hard to do. Now we got a raid target event. So we draw another event card here. And uh, so it's not the approach event this time, but the target event. And it says low level bombers shift down one row for squadron attack. Shift two columns right for bombing. Do not apply shifts for clouds. Okay, so we gotta remember that. I'm gonna place that here. And, uh, yeah, and now it's the squadron interception. So it simply says now here, this is the squadron interception summary here. If squadrons uh, are equal to Gruppen in Bomber Box, and that is exactly what is the case. All Gruppen in Bomber Box and Close Escort Box are intercepted. So now these have to fight all of the others. Okay. And that's what happens now. So, let's see. We got it um, again. Uh, we got now the squadron attack, and this also happens now on the combat results table. So it's the same thing. We add now all the uh, fighter value together. So first the squadrons. We got a four, a two, and a two. So that's eight. And then all the bombers. They have all a fighter value of six. And in this case, it's actually a disadvantage for the Germans. The higher the fighter value, the worse it is. So, we got 8, and then we got this, uh, well, that's 3 times a 6. <sighs> Let me see, that's, a, uh, that's an 18 plus 8, that's 24. And then we have here... This me 110, so that's two more, so that's 26. Okay, and then we have six Gruppen, the bombers and the fighters. So we got here six Gruppen, and we go down to 26. And this is this one here, so that's row number E. Well, let's see, let's hope we roll, do a good roll here. And that's okay, that's a 5, that looks pretty good, I think. Um, 
Yeah, I think I can live with that. So you can see here, German A, A, A. All of them. Yeah, A, B, C, all A. So what does that mean? Well, it means that... Now we check here, units in bomber box. Full Gruppe, A aboard, so they all go to in-flight reduced. So that's pretty cool because that means we managed to intercept all bombers so there will no bombardments follow this rate. And then let's see what happens to our British friends. Uh, we have an L for the A um, for the A planes, and the good thing is there are no A, a planes, so that would mean that we have a light loss. But luckily, that doesn't apply here. Uh, then we have no effect for the B ones, and these two are B. So let's see what no effect exactly means. Unit here, uh, we got a full squadron that goes to in-flight, and the reduced squadron goes to in-flight reduced. So the B, they move all here. And then finally, we got a D disrupt for the C planes and that is this one and that is a reduced group and I think that's not so great so let's see a reduced squadron disrupt so that goes to in-flight reduced that's okay that's pretty awesome so basically we were quite successful in intercepting the bombers uh, we didn't exactly win any victory points. We had two light losses, which is not perfect. But overall, we managed to intercept the whole raid. So I guess that was good. Okay. So, that means there will be no bombardment. And now we do the German recovery in the in-flight box. So... We got here the German recovery. Move Gruppen from in flight as follows. Bombers to air bases reduced. So that's what we do now. All the three the three bombers go now back to the air base. They are reduced. And that means that they cannot fly another raid um, on the same day as long as they are reduced. The full fighters go to clock plus three. Okay, there is only this full fighter here, all the others are reduced. And that means now we got a time here. So clock plus three, that means one, two, three. So here we are, and that means at two o'clock that fighter will be ready for another raid. The reduced fighters, they are flipped to full and they move to clock plus four. So they take a little longer. They will be ready at four o'clock. Here we go. And this is it then. So that was the German recovery. And then we gotta do a clock update. And we gotta check now parade target event card. So, this is this one here, and here we have a time advance zero. That's, no, that's actually, oh, damn it, yeah, wait a second. Shift down one row for squadron attack. Damn, I didn't do that. Let me see. I forgot that. Maybe that, that actually might give me, ah, okay. So, in this case, it wouldn't be an actually F. Ah, let me check that again, please. Okay, that's actually, that's important. I forgot that. Of course I did. This is the low-level bombers. So that gives me an advantage. 
uh, when attacking these guys. So I had a five. So let me see now. We had here. Uh, it was. Yeah, it was 26. And we got. Uh, Wait a second. We had six fighters there, huh? Damn, I'm not absolutely sure. I think it was like that. Yeah, we had six fighters. I'm pretty sure about that. I don't know about... Damn it. Okay, I'm, I might correct this later. But I think what actually happens is the Germans take one light damage. The B... Yeah, the A would be a light damage. So that might that means that this uh, this bomber would actually take a light damage, and uh, yeah, the B would simply abort, and the C would be disrupted. So that simply means that disrupt goes to in flight reduced, and abort also goes to in flight reduced. So the others would all go to in-flight reduce then. Okay, I think this is actually the only difference. The other ones also disrupt or abort, so there is no difference for my people, but there is a difference uh, because I managed to give these guys a light loss, so that means I gain one victory point here. Okay, and now we can do this again here. Uh, we can now place these guys here and all these, they go four spaces from here. That is here, but they are now full again. I'm not absolutely sure. I might have mixed this up. Maybe this one is not the one who was actually full, but in the end it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's not so important. I mixed this up because um, I forgot that uh, this card here with the low-level bombers. So, okay. Yeah, that's that. Uh, so that was the German recovery now. And now we come to the clock update. And that means now we have here a time advance that was the last card that we've drawn and that says a time advance of one. So now time goes up here and there's still a lot to do. Uh, yeah. So let's see. Um, yeah, and then we got the If there would have been no time advance, we would have had a new raid right away. But this is not the case now, so we have now airfield operations. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, we got here the airfield operations. We see here after one time advance, the rearm, the planes in the rearm sectors, they would go now in their sectors. The one in the land, they would go to the rearm. There is no there. The patrolling ones, they go now in the rearm sectors. So that means now we have to place these guys. The 611, they have to, well, they kind of have to land and they have to be rearmed. So they cannot be used during the next raid. Okay. And this guy here. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's it. And then we have the ones from full in flight, or the, 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 the full in flight squadrons. They go to rearm, so we have one here, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have reduced in flight squadrons, and they have to land. And there we can flip them to full. So that's a 211 here, and one is here. And then we have this from 111, and that goes here. Okay. So now, as you can see, during our next raid, 
there are definitely less planes available than during the first one. So that's why you have to do this, these decisions, which one goes on patrols and yeah, which one you want to fight with and so on. And then we had these light losses and they won't fly during this day and we have to repair them so they can fly uh, another day again. Okay, so that was the uh, airfield operations. And, uh, yeah, exactly, this is, uh, well, rah, rah, rah. give me a break here, squadron turn around, advance warning, yeah, okay, and then we got to do a, an advance warning again, so now, I'm going to draw another top card here, and it's the same thing as before, we got here, Luft flooded to south, Probably the next raid and the raid after that again, Luftflotte to south. So, these cards are all discarded here. So, again, we have to decide now which one is gonna go on patrol and actually. Yeah, I think I sent them all on patrol now. I mean, if there is no time advance, then... Okay, here. So, and... Uh, I'm even thinking about... Well, we got this guy here. Well, actually, I'm considering... I think I will take this one here from 511, sector 511, place him here in this patrol area and then I'm gonna take this guy here from 611 and place him here so in this case in this way it's a little more balanced and uh, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty sure I'm gonna take maybe both planes from 410 place them here in this area and then I might take one and place them here from 310 and place them here in middle wallop actually okay yeah it's a little risky but I think that's fine for now so that one's the, the squadron patrol assignment and now we simply have to start a new rate phase. So that means we have to draw where the next target is and we got to do this all over again. And remember, just... Yeah, just two hours advanced. So it's still the, the morning of, uh, of the first day. And we're going to play this for over a month so uh, now you can see why this takes uh, well probably longer than 12 hours and why I'm not gonna do everything on camera actually I'm not even sure uh, if I should do every evening of the day on camera I mean one thing uh, I wanna I wanna point out it's not that, I, that we gotta go through every single day you draw a day event after at the end of the day and then uh, some time elapses and that is between one or six days so yeah it's not that bad as it might seem but still there is a lot of uh, there's a lot to do so I think it makes sense only to show you a little bit okay um, yeah, I think it's time now to load this up and uh, hope you're still interested in the next, uh, in the next, well, it's not exactly a turn, in the next rate and uh, hope to see you in my next video.